morning, everybody. Um, I'm Alex Valsic, and I've been consulting here at the Nantucket Lightship Basket Museum since January. Uh, it's been a wonderful experience with the staff and having the opportunity to make more lightship baskets. I was so excited that uh, I wanted to surprise my wife when she came up for a visit, and I made her actually this basket. And when I presented to her, she said, wow, that's lovely, thank you. Do you think you can put a lid on it? So I thought to myself, what a wonderful thing to research. Uh, today's lecture is called Put a Lid on It, the history of lids on Nantucket baskets. <clears throat> so I'm um, gonna go into quick little history of baskets. Baskets are like one of the earliest things um, known. They go back about 26,000 um, years. Uh, it even predates pottery. Um, this is actually a uh, fragment of a basket that was made in Egypt 12,000 years ago, um, according to carbon dating. Um, and basically, if you look at the pottery, Pottery came around 20,000 years ago. And you'll see that uh, this, this is a Jomon, Japanese uh, pottery. It's about 15,000 years old. You can see the striations. So they don't know if it was actually made to look like a basket or was a basket used and the clay was pushed into the basket, thrown into a fire, and the basket burned off, leaving the remnants in the pot. <clears throat> um, there's no direct evidence that lids were created for baskets, but I'm guessing that basically lids are as old as baskets themselves. Uh, you basically want to prevent things from the basket falling out, blown away, or for storage of uh, long-term foodstuffs. So, as many of you know, there were many different types of baskets that were made when the English settlers first came to, uh, to Nantucket. Um, as early as 1720, um, a traveling novelist called uh, J. Hector St. John de Corvo um, wrote letters from an American farmer published in London in 1782, and he included a section entitled Peculiar Customs of Nantucketers, which dated back to 1722. He described a variety of bowls and other implements executed cooper-wise with the greatest neatness and elegance in basket form. Unfortunately, we don't have any um, physical evidence of these baskets that he was talking about but at the time, uh, Native Americans were certainly building split stave baskets. Uh, there were also shaker style baskets, and there were also a type of uh, New Hampshire basket. So this is a Wampanoag basket, um, shaker basket, and a New Hampshire basket. Oh, if anybody has any questions, feel free to jump in at any time. Um, the earliest Nantucket baskets that we have date back to the 1850s and seem to have been primarily made on the South Shoal lightship. And that's a picture of the South Shoal lightship in, uh, in dry dock. Um, Basically, the captain and their crew during long, tedious months they spent anchored on the shoals, um, they were illuminating for passing ships. In his letters, uh, James Wood Sr., who served on the South Shoal Lightship from 1866 to 1867, states that most men aboard were making baskets and clothespins uh, at the time. In 1866, Charles B. Ray of the South Shoal Lightship informed the Inquirer and Mirror that he had completed his 200th 
uh, rattan basket, having sold 140 of them already. Charles B. Ray was the father of Charles C. Ray and the grandfather of Mitchie Ray, both of whom were uh, recognized Nantucket basket makers. Um, this is a picture of uh, Andrew Sansbury. Um, he was basically making rattan baskets with his first mate, Thomas James. And uh, this little ad here was printed in the Inky Mirror back in 1878. And you can see that it says uh, that Mrs. Folger was the only agent for selling his baskets. And here's his signature, and that was the price, a uh, dollar and 25 cents for that basket, which was probably a handsome sum back in 1878. Um, there seems to be a misconception that Jose Reyes, who started working much later in 1948, was the first basket maker to actually put a lid on Nantucket baskets. But that's not the case. There are many 19th century baskets with lids. Um, you can see in this picture, um, some have hinges, um, others have leather straps, and others have yet drop-on lids. So here are the leather hinges, brass hinge, and just a drop on top. Um, so why would anybody put a lid on it? It's an extra effort, um, takes a while to make, um, there should be a good reason. It seems that there are several possible reasons. Um, for starters, here's Main Street back in the uh, late 19th century, and people were driving around in these buckboards. So imagine you have your purse next to you, and you don't have a lid on it, and you're bouncing up and down Main Street. Um, all your stuff's going to come out. So that's one potential reason. Another um, is people used baskets for feather collection, to make pillows, quilts, other items. So they needed the stuff to stay put and not blown away. Also, people used the baskets to transport food, like pies and other fragile goods. And the lids basically provided good protection. Though not technically lids, some baskets had doilies or an internal pouch with a drawstring, either free floating or attached. And these functioned as protective um, measures for precious items as well. One of the difficulties in establishing the provenance of early lidded baskets is that most makers did not sign their work. Um, Here's an example of a basket uh, from an unknown artist. There's no way to tell. It has a very interesting latch. It almost looks like you could put a lock on it. Um, this one is attributed to Charles B. Ray, but there's no 100% proof that that actually is the case. There were there were some slight changes, mostly for functional reasons, until 1948 or, or so we thought. Um, here's an example of a early form of a lidded purse made by Charles B. Ray for his daughter, um, Mary Abbey Ray, um, 1834 to 1920. This is the earliest known prototype of a basket purse that so many of the Nantucket ladies currently carry. Um, in 1948, uh, a momentous event occurred in Nantucket basket mating, making. This was the year that a man from the Philippines rejoined his wife and children on Nantucket, and that's um, Jose Reyes. He was originally looking for a job as a school teacher, and it paid about $200 a month. And Jose quickly realized that he couldn't support his family on that. 
salary. Um, at the time, Mitchie Ray, the grandson of Charles B. Ray, um, he was an older basket uh, maker with no children. Jose had some experience with making baskets in the Philippines. And given his interest, he watched Michi Ray uh, and chatted with him many times and saw how these Nantucket baskets were made. So here in Life magazine, there's a picture of Jose in his workshop. And here the uh, Life magazine cover uh, showing a woman holding a uh, reticule style basket with a uh, round reed with a little satchel in there. And then here's a uh, Jose Reyes. Both of these are up front in the, uh, the exhibit. Um, shows a similar type of basket, but in an Nantucket style with a, um, a satchel that was made by his, uh, his wife. Um, so he was experimenting with different ideas of how to um, come up with something that would appeal to, uh, to people. And basically, um, because of his relationship with Michi Ray, it's possible that Jose had seen many generations of Ray baskets, including the prototype basket that Michi's grandfather, Charles B. Ray, made for uh, Mary Abbey Ray, uh, which potentially led to the idea of the friendship basket. If you look at this basket, you'll see that it has the top plate. Uh, this is inlaid mother of pearl. It has a shallow lid on top. Um, and there's one of uh, Jose's early baskets, uh, very, very similar. Um, one of the differences, instead of having the handle go over the narrow end, he did it over the long end. But you can see possibly where Jose got the idea uh, for the friendship basket. Now, some of uh, Jose Reyes's first attempts to make a lidded basket um, we have in our exhibit. Um, and they were basically a covered basket but with no top plate. And the handle was kind of sewn into the, or woven into the basket on top. So this could be the 1.0 version, kind of, of the, uh, the friendship basket. Um, Jose Reyes, a new Charlie Sale, uh, a local, local Nantucket ivory carver and, and jewelry maker, whose wife recommended that he attach some carved ebony whales to the lid of his baskets. Uh, this is also a early Jose Reyes basket, but you could see there's nothing on top. And then this is an example of his baskets with the ebony whale on top. The style um, immediately caught on to the, um, to the fact or to the point that Saks Fifth Avenue started making their own version of it and selling it for $20 in 1966. So here there's an ad in the New Yorker for a rattan Nantucket bag. There is also in the back of the museum uh, there's also a picture of a full page ad from the Times also showing the purses that they were trying to sell. Well, uh, other makers quickly followed. Uh, Sherwin Boyer, Stanley Roop, Steve Gibbs, Paul Witten, Manny Diaz, Bill Severance, and that's just to name a few. You may have noticed that uh, all of these makers were men. It wasn't until the 70s or 80s that basket making skills um, were taught to women. But to be fair, Jose Reyes had his entire family, including his uh, granddaughter, assisting him, when, uh, which allowed him to make so many baskets. 
So at this point, baskets became much more elaborate. You can see um, greater detail, more expensive material, design elements, elaborate latching mechanisms, um, covered handles, feet on the bottom plate, skirts of, uh, of ivory, different woods and materials like ebony rosewood, jade and lapis lazuli, even gold and semi-precious stones began to be incorporated as basket makers work to satisfy their customer uh, requests. No two women wanted the same basket. So in a continual race to sell more baskets, modern basket makers have become even more original in their design and some got big and others got small. Um, and then also lids went wild. Uh, along the way, two lids joined together became a clutch style purse. So here's just a simple clutch on the right and here's another clutch with a, uh, a handle uh, woven into the rim. Um, so uh, there's been a global merging of styles uh, with makers as far away as uh, Japan creating these different uh, baskets. This one in particular has a glass top. Uh, this one uh, made of lacquer with a pull-up top uh, that doesn't quite come off. It slides up and down the handle. And then you have the, um, the, flower, the flower tops. And these are all over in that case right over there. Um, so meanwhile, current Nantucket makers like Michael Caine, Joan Brink, Freddie Lee, Nat Plank, Tim Parsons, Kathleen Myers, and others uh, continue to innovate and push the boundaries of what is a Nantucket basket and how you put a lid on it. Yeah, this is uh, the Freddie Lee, which are in the back case over there. This is a, um, a Hiller uh, Pagoda style top. This is uh, Michael Caine with a square top. Um, and here's uh, Kathleen Myers with sort of a round top, a basket. So, any questions? <laughs> yes? Well, it refers to all the baskets. If it's not noted there that the ivory was done or the decoration was done by somebody, do we assume that the basket maker that's listed? Um, they... some, sometimes it's the same person. Uh -huh. uh, you know, Charlie Sale was a basket maker, but he could also carve his own ivory. But in a lot of these examples, uh, somebody made the basket and another person um, okay. did, did the, uh, the, the ivory. Like in the case of uh, Jose Reyes, his early baskets were done by uh, uh, Charlie Sale. And later on, uh, they had some sort of falling out. He turned to Nancy Chase, which did uh, um, a lot of his baskets. Yes? Could you explain how Freddie made gold? Yeah. Uh, well, let's go back. So basically what he did is he took a, a block of styrofoam. And um, he basically carved it into that shape. And then he basically wove around the styrofoam. Now, this, you know, this lid is almost decorative, but it also um, would allow him that after the basket was finished, he could literally take a, a coat hanger, a hot coat hanger, and start scooping out the styrofoam until he got all of the styrofoam out. And that's the same thing of the, uh, the Joan Brink uh, baskets, the ones that have the uh, southwestern feel out in the front case. That's how those were made as well. Any other questions? One more. Yes. You make a lid for your wife's I'm working on it. 
I haven't, I haven't gotten it. Actually, um, temporarily, we just uh, put, put a doily on it. Yeah, there, there it is. So I, I do have, I, I started making the lid, but I'm not finished. <laughs> uh, any other questions? Okay, well, thank you all for coming. <laughs>